Hi everyone, uh, welcome on this session. Happy to see you again. Uh, and uh, yeah, feel free. We'll have a discussion for today in the topics. Hope uh, we have seen we have seen the agenda. Uh, just waiting for uh, Alice to she's sharing the screen. I don't know if the less you can see. Yeah. So today we are going to talk about uh, sexual and reproductive behavior and rights. This is our topic for this month. Next. Mark, before before we jump in, just a reminder to, to remind people about the translation. Yeah, so uh, we have three in the version on French, English, uh, Spanish, and uh, what is the other language? Spain, Portuguese, English, and Spanish. So we go. We have a burden of interpretation. If we are using a laptop, a laptop, when you click, you select the language that uh, you want to listen to. Same as the phone, there's a button at the end saying more. When you go there, you find a, again the button on the interpretation, and then you can also the language you want to listen to. I hope that is clear and uh, everyone had like any of your interpretation. Okay, silence means everyone is in, in like channel. So I'm going to just do the topic before we go, we give uh, the speakers for today. Now, what is the reproductive uh, history? Uh, it looks like we've lost Mark. Um, oh, you're back. The screen is not shown. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I was saying, what is section under the product? We have and rights. So we are saying section under the product. We have and rights. In uh, right, in short, it's ARA, it's ARA is all about making sure that everyone can make their own choices about their bodies, sexuality, and uh, having children. It is about having access to information and services that help to keep healthy and safe when it comes 
to sex and having babies. This includes things like getting accurate information about conception, being able to plan when you want to have kids, and getting care if you need it. Why is it important to know about uh, RHR? Now, first, stay safe. We learn how to protect ourselves from bad situations and understand what is and is not okay in relationships. Uh, in choices, we have a right to make decisions about our bodies and relationships, just like everyone else. Next. Uh, still on why it's important to know about HR, HR, stay healthy, knowing about HR, HR, help us learn how to have safe sex and prevent problems like sexually transmitted infections. And also get the help if we need it, we will know where to go and who to go for support and care. Next. What does the LPG say on SRA Not discrimination. People with disabilities are not treated and fear when it comes to getting health care, including SRHR services, which you do get the same. Access to information and help anyone else. For example, we should have access to education about sex and relationships in schools or through support services. Next. We have the same rights right as everyone else. We have the right to have a relationship with the person we choose and who chooses us. We have the right to have private and casual sex life. We have the right to have a baby and make our own family. We should have the same rights as men. We have access to services. Healthcare services should be easy to get to and understand for people with disabilities. So we can be healthy. This includes make sure we get good support to go to sexual and reproductive health opportunities. The services are accessible and we are given information in format we can understand. Choices and con concerns. We have the right to choose what happens to our bodies. This means we understand and agree to any medical treatment or procedure related to sexual and reproductive health. No one should do anything to our bodies that we do not understand. We should not, we should get support to understand our choices and make decisions. For example, with contraception. Contraception.
protection from harm. Uh, not should be hit, hurt, or abused because of their disability. The CRFE says that people with disabilities should be pro protected from violence and abuse, including when it comes to sexual and reproductive health. For example, no one should not force you to do anything you do not want to do. Next. Okay. Now, that is our uh, introduction. And now we are going to invite our first speaker who is from Ramia, Ruth Kihana. Ruth, over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rosie Chihana, a self advocate and the Impasse Project Coordinator in Zambia. In a friend and development foundation organization in Zambia. Next. The, the, the productive health and rights for persons with intellectual disability. Overview of the workshop which I I attend in Kenya on sexual and reproductive health and rights on 11th to 12th December 2023, where I, I, I attended, I was so impressed to discuss this topic in Kenya, because this are not most discussed to persons with intellectual disabilities. This meeting was really helpful for me, and also I learned a lot of knowledge because as people with intellectual disability, we don't understand some things, and also sexual reproductive health it's so important for persons with intellectual disabilities to understand. And also I learned that the person with disabilities have rights like any other disabilities. According to CRPD Article 25, explain that uh, this uh, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, Article number 25, says that pro protecting the rights of persons with intellectual disability in health and access to services, including sexual reproductive health. The, Importance of non discrimination in health care for persons with intellectual disability. It's important because the person with intellectual disability have the same rights like, like, like any other person. So person with intellectual disability have right to health care in any form because they are also a human being they can take any medication next slide right of person with intellectual disability i as a root am intellectual disability i have a right to choose a partner and decide on having children. I have a right to make a decision about their 
I have a right to make a decision about it, my own body and the sexual health. Access to sexual and reproductive health care services. I have a right for protection from sexual violence and the discrimination based on gender or sexuality. After coming back from Kenya, discussion with his self-advocate and the families in Zambia, we discussed the following importance of discussing sexual and reproductive health issues with a person with intellectual disability. This was really helpful and self-advocacy, starting opening up their mind, and also they are very happy to hear this information because they, there was never before learned about it, sexual and reproductive health issues. They, are, they haven't learned before. And the parents' reaction to hear self-advocacy discuss sexuality, they, they were very, very happy and humbled about what we are discussing. They know that we, us, we are also a part of the community. Insight shared by a person with intellectual disability and their desire for love and relationship. This also helps self-advocacy to open their mind and to discuss these issues. And also they, they wish to discuss this issue as RH every monthly meetings, every monthly meetings, because this issue is not really discussed. Next slide. Challenge is faced by person with intellectual disability. Overprotected over protection by parents leading to restriction on relationship. This point means that some parents with children with intellectual disability are more protective to their children with intellectual disabilities. When a person with intellectual disability can explain for them about the, being in the relationship. It's not easy. They just insist on them and solve that person with intellectual disability to be in a relationship. Forced contraception, contraception and injection to prevent sex, sexual activities. The person with intellectual disabilities are forced to get contraception so that he can't give birth or get for pregnant because he is she is an intellectual disability. Barriers to experience love, engagement and marriage for a person with disabilities. And also stigma. People with intellectual disability face discrimination in finding partners. In some cases, when a person with intellectual disability has found a partner, but the people in the community study to discriminate that person with intellectual disability that makes the person with intellectual disability to be, to be not part of the people in the society. 
Next slide. Challenges continued. Lack of autonomy. We may not have the freedom to choose our partner. Our families we can't allow a person with intellectual disability to to find a partner of her choice. Maybe miscom misconceptions about our reproductive ability impact our relationship. Limited support. We may not have access to resources for navigating relationship. This point means that when a person with intellectual disability being proposed or engaged, she or he cannot be supported. Like when an able-bodied person gets engaged, or are ready to get married. Some families can contribute if it's a girl, a pot or white. If it's a boy, she, they can help him, for example, to pay the water. But for person with intellectual disability, it is not necessary to be supported to to this issue. Next slide. Myth and misconception. Person with intellectual disability may bear more children with disabilities. Which means that person, people believe that if a person with disabilities have a child, she can also bear a child, children with disabilities. Overprotection and misconception. Preventing individual from experiencing love and relationship. FVDF is teaching families and society to stop believing means and let people with intellectual disabilities make their own choices and be free. So that the person with intellectual disability have full freedom when they like any other person. Organization effort. FBD help held three meetings on sexual and reproductive health rights for persons with intellectual disabilities. Response was positive, only highlighting the need for ongoing education and support. Stigma, stigma and discrimination make it hard for persons with disabilities to find a partner. We had planned for more meetings with the peers and families this year so that this issue should be come to under to an end and to help persons with intellectual disability to be feel that they also part of the society. In conclusion, advocate for inclusive and and supporting environment to empower persons with intellectual disabilities in relationship and reproductive decision.
and also continue dialogue and initiative to promote autonomy, autonomy and respect for individuals with intellectual disabilities. If there is any question, Thank you so much for attention. This is, was my presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ruth. Hello. For, for that presentation. Uh, now, we are going to go for our next speaker, uh, Louis, uh, who is the uh, vice president of uh, Inclusion International and a member of uh, uh, Dungeon Room, Colombia. Louis, over to you. Thank you so much for the introduction. I'm so happy to participate here today in this workshop to speak about our projects and the work we have been doing here on sexual and reproductive rights with people with disabilities. In As Down and Pro Familia. We're going to speak today about the different initiative uh, in this project, My Sexuality, My Right. In 2012, a project called My Sexuality, My Right was developed. There, we selected a series of topics aimed at training people with intellectual psychosocial disabilities uh, in relation to the management of their sexuality. As you can see, I participated with Camila and other colleagues of As Down in a workshop we organized with Pro Familia and As Down. They, there was online training and also a in, in present training. In person training. Can you hear me? Okay, some of the topics we addressed were things that had to do with self-image and self-care. So the image that we have of our own image, uh, sexuality, sex, gender, and sexual orientation. Things that have to do with love and falling in love. Relationships, responsibility in relationships, and also we spoke about advocacy on all these topics. We spoke already about the Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities, myths and realities about sexuality, contraceptive methods, uh, things like the condom and different contraceptive methods and prevention of sexually related diseases violence and ways to denounce violence. And also we spoke about our body and our sexual and reproductive rights. We trained around 300 people with intellectual disabilities or psychosocial disabilities. And we are also educated our families and health professionals. We learned about the 1996 law that recognizes our right to decide. This is a really, really important 
right that we have achieved. And something that is very, very important is that the sterilization of minors with disabilities is not allowed and that their consent must always be guaranteed. In fact, there is a decree to make sexual and reproductive health services accessible to any person with disabilities. Something that is very, very important is that we have a decree, as I already said, so that the sterilization of minors with disability is not allowed anymore. We did a workshop with Laura Jimena, with Camila, and with other colleagues from Astown in several workshops and trainings that were had to do with sexual and reproductive rights. There I am in the photo with different students in a training so that they learn about the myths that have to do with sexual and reproductive rights. Next slide, please. So we have also carried out different campaigns with messages that come directly from our, our voices. We have also realized two, we have held two medical congresses to show the importance of care and counseling for people with disabilities. This project was carried out in five different cities in Colombia. And there you can see a guide for people with disabilities so that they can understand their own sexual and reproductive rights and health. Next slide, please. And here to end, I'm going to speak about a workshop that we held two, month, two weeks ago in our international self-advocate meeting organized by Us Down. Here, it was a training from that Francisco de Julio carried out and where he spoke about our sexual and reproductive rights. We spoke about our different tastes, uh, the changes in our bodies. We spoke about masturbation, about orgasm, about consent, about pornography, uh, the different types of relationships, the different sexual orientations, LGTB, you, etc. We spoke about mutual respect, emotions, and about physical expressions. We also showed a short film by Plena Inclusion called It's a Matter of Taste. Next slide and last slide. And with this, this is the end of my presentation. If somebody has a question, please let me know. Does anybody have a question? You can also let me know through the chat. Does anybody have a question? You can just raise your hand or write something in the chat. Well, if you have any doubt, you can let me know. First of all, I want to thank Mark and Plena Inclusion and I hope you really enjoyed this and that it was really useful. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Louis and Ruth, for the nice presentation. Um, you have shared experience, what you have done, which is really useful. Now we are going to have a group discussion. So uh, the first question that we want to discuss is 
Have you ever participated in any training or project about sexual and reproduction in health and uh, life? And also, you can think about what barriers and challenges to save advocates face to have any sexual and reproductive life realized. What are some of the extra barriers women and intellectual disability may have? So, I open the floor to anyone to share experience based on uh, those uh, questions. Ma? Uh, sorry, um, Cherie wants to answer, but she would like uh, to read the question and give the answer. Is that right or how, how must she do it? Mark, you're, you're on mute. Yeah, I'll then yeah you can you can answer the question. You can go okay. Okay, not yes if okay. Question okay, okay. Question one have you participated in any training or project about sexual sexual and reproductive health and rights? My answer no. I have not received any training on sexu sexual reproduction and rights. Question two. What barriers and challenges do self advocates face to having our sexual and reproductive rights realized? What are some of the extra concerns that women with intellectual disability may have? My answer, parents do... Parents do not speak to their children because they think we do not need to understand our sexual and reproductive rights. Then we do not understand these matters and we can be exploited. Men sometimes think they can use us women because we do not understand our sexuality. It nearly happened to me. Some girls do not understand their menstruation and they are afraid of it. They think they can die because of the bleeding. Question three, what can we do as self-advocates to advocate for our rights and challenge these barriers? My answer, we must speak up and tell the world that we are as human as they are. We must demand open conversation and ask the questions we have. I advocate for that. Thank you. Mark, you're, you're muted again, but I think you said uh, to go to Stephanie. Yeah, of course, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think we're right in the Stephanie. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. So, should I answer um, all the questions? Yes, yeah, Stephanie, go ahead. Okay, so first question, if I ever participated, yes, I have. I took part in a, in, in a, in a talk last week 
discussing about sexuality. And what I learned about it is that sexuality, it's not just about sex. It's much more than that. It's about your body and what you like and to know your limits. So to sum up, is is much more than you know orientation. Uh, second question. So, what are the barriers that we face? The barriers we face uh, uh, regarding this matter is that uh, people with disabilities uh, we are isolated by society. Uh, putting us in a place that we have no access to information, uh, we have no space to talk about this. So people think that um, so people sometimes think that we're only talking about sex, but it's much more than that. It's about feelings, about our bodies, our choices. and it's it's a taboo uh, in talking about sex is a taboo so we feel repressed uh, and we don't express uh, our feelings here in brazil we have no space to talk about this so families don't talk about this with people with disabilities what is sexuality they they don't talk about this so uh, sometimes they come to an uh, adult age and you know have no idea about this and also, to sum up, there's this and there are other questions, other matters as well. So, for example, sometimes uh, they are touched uh, and they are not taught whether this touch is a positive or a negative thing. If it's violence or if it's, uh, you know, if it's not. So uh, about sexual education, really, that is not okay to touch, you know, our intimate parts. And, and sometimes they are, uh, as we are not taught about this, sometimes we, it happens to us, you know, it happens to people, but as they are not taught, they don't, they don't know that it's not okay and then they don't express themselves. So they are abused and they don't talk about it. Uh, and regarding the third question, Um, how to promote so the third question it's like we as people we have to be more alert uh, and get to know more about the subject like participating trainings like in Colombia Luis uh, had an, an, the initiative and showed uh, the other people you know, how to talk about this. So, so we have to um, create more spaces for this and create trainings and give trainings to people. So do just like Luis. Um, like I myself, uh, I, 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 I was the teacher in a, in a course, in a training. And as we teach something we also learn about it and then we we discovered that there is material about this and uh, we put this material in simple language easy to understand language and we have this material here that we made and I can share with you in this training like right if you if you want I can share with you and you can, you know, just translate to your language and use it in trainings. So it's easy to understand language and you can use it. Um, so it's perfect for this kind of training for people with disabilities. So we also have to work with the families, but not, o not only with the people, but with their families. Uh, so it's important to include the families in the training. So they can understand that uh, some things are, are not, we have to break this taboo. Like you cannot touch people, you cannot have a relationship and you cannot, you know, let other people touch you. We have to talk about this. We have to raise awareness about this subject.
So, so if we have the support, you know, from other people and from the family, and we will have support from the society, and we have to do this in trainings, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, think, uh, I think, yeah, you can share with us what you are you, you have, and we see how we can uh, share with all that so that they can get the information and also maybe use it when they have something to, to do. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, I will send you the email. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And I saw a hand from Chantel. Yeah, you can now uh, speak, Chantel. Yeah, Chantel, go ahead. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, everybody. We are here in Benin. I participated in an event in Kenya. And we had the opportunity to speak about many issues. What we do want, what we do not want. Hi, I am uh, Mireille, the uh, support person for Chantal and um, I would like to insist on what she's just said. So she is Chantal, she's a self-representative for Benin and she uh, followed a training on uh, sexual and reproductive health and rights in December 2023. And what was important for her, and she would like to share, is that uh, these people also have the right to decide for themselves. They have the right to make love with other people. And uh, she learned that she has the right to have a sexual life and to go to a health center to ask for information to ask for anticonceptive possibilities. Thank you very much. The uh, important thing for uh, us also is that people often say things that are not a uh, right and um and there is a great difference between the past and the present times and it's a positive evolution when a person with disability goes to the hospital um, now this person can get some information about sexual and reproductive health the um, doctors themselves do receive the persons and they explain them what they can do. They explain them that they can have children, that uh, they 
can uh, have a partner, which was not the case in the past. It's a very good thing because as a person with disability, she has got to learn about her rights. And now she knows that she has some rights um, in terms of sexual and reproductive health. So she can go to the hospital uh, as any other person. She can ask for information about mm, sex and reproduction. And she thanks everybody, Chantal thanks everybody for hearing her. Uh, thank you very much, Chantal. Uh, get to share uh, on the same as questions or just in general experience. Um, there was a time when I started yeah, learning from school. I didn't have a chance to come out with a group of people with intellectual disabilities and talk about the things, but I had some friends that we could sit down and talk about sex reproduction and health, about the diseases. And uh, yeah, there was time when I feel like I'm a partner, I find my partner, and we started. And together, before we do the wedding, we agreed no children until so we do proper wedding, and then we did the wedding, and after wedding, we plan for children to have children. So, as people with disabilities, yeah, we need support, we need information. Lucky enough, I had managed to have information from school and uh, of friends that I was uh, chatting with, and that make me to help me to understand about the general report that they have, and also able to go to hospital when I, uh, I need uh, information about it. So that is also my experience. Can we go to the next? Question? Maybe you. Yeah, I think I think people have been answering those the, the next question already, Mark, but they're just in the chat and the questions were um around what can self advocates do to advocate for their rights and uh if people have any resources that they um they can share or they want to share. Um, uh, does anyone else have anything that they want to, to discuss or if they have anything to answer the first few questions? You can put your hand up or you can unmute. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. Yes, Patrick. Uh, Mark Juan has got his hand up, I think, if, if we can't hear Patrick. Juan, do you want to go? Hello, I am the support person for Juan in this call. And as we were listening to what all of you were telling us, Juan is from Argentina and he has also a partner, but he says that here there is a lack of information 
and he has never had the opportunity to share a space in which these topics that have to do with sexuality, with care, were spoken about. He has received information from his family and from his doctor. So in this sense, his mom has really, really supported him, but it was, he has only support, received the support of his mother and of his doctor. So he thinks that for someone with a mental disability, intellectual disability, it is very, very hard to find a partner and to live uh, in a couple. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, so how can we, I think another question is, uh, as far as focus, what can we do to deal with ch these challenges or to advocate on, on this one, on this health issue, how can we do it? Anyone? Uh, just, just to start with, I think as self advocates we need now uh, to do advocate in our communities and uh, ask in our organizations to bring up this topic. We start within our self advocates and then we can start this advocating in government, in health facilities. Uh, areas, uh, hospitals, so that they can understand and uh, have some training workshops so that they know how they can work so how they can to make them understand that we people with intellectual disabilities have feelings and we want to learn about this so that we want to be independent and have family, we should do that. I uh, have noted from experts, from hospitals, and we get those information. Things that can also help in our communities to advocate, to do this advocate work. Uh, I see a hand from Ruth. Ruth. And also... To, to thank our voice as a self-advocate, to do more advocacy, to appear in the community, and also more train healthy professionals so that they can get more information about the person with intellectual disabilities. When they get more information and you know as a person with intellectual disabilities, it can help them to give us proper health services. Yeah, that is true. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, anyone? I think Patrick's put his hand up again. Can we hear you yet, Patrick? Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Patrick from the Association for Inclusive uh, Development in uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, I've been following uh, uh, all the conversations. It's very rich. Thank you so much to all the organizers. I wanted to share my concern. In our 
country, there are many self-advocates that need participating in workshops. Our problem is in our country is that people have no online access, no internet access. They live in uh, areas with no internet and they can't participate in those online to those online workshops. When there are on-site uh, training and courses, we would like to be able to send our self-advocates so that then they could share their own experience, the, the, the training they've received. So this is our concern. As an organization, none of our self-advocate has been trained. There are many training. The, the one in Kenya, we weren't aware of, of it. There are uh, self-advocates don't have access to internet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe should we go for the next question? What is Yeah, Mark, I, I think everyone has been answering kind of all the questions. Um, did, did you have anything to respond to in terms of Patrick's uh, point around um, self-advocates in the DRC not having access to internet or access to resources? It's, it's a big issue we know in Africa and in parts of Asia Pacific. Yeah, I think uh, we hope. Uh, that challenge uh, in Africa, but uh, I think through if you are managed to join us, and I think your organization can also have access to the internet and uh, go, connect with us as one as of the resources. I think we can share resources you are with, and then as organization can uh, organize such meetings or such workshops so that someone can learn about uh, his issues. Uh, yeah, anything to add on that, uh, Alice, or anyone? Yeah, I, uh, does anyone have any other, I mean, in terms of sharing resources and supporting organizations or people who might not be um, connected to like self-advocacy groups? Does anyone have any advice for Patrick around how he can support um, the, the people with intellectual disabilities in his organization to, to understand more about self-advocacy? Uh, if if there's no other comments, Patrick, I think this is something that um, that Mark and I would be happy to support you with, and we can can talk um, perhaps in a separate meeting and think about um, some strategies that we can share from from our networks and from other networks with, within Inclusion Africa, perhaps as well can can support. Um, so it would be good to connect perhaps uh, offline. But thank you for the comment. And it is something that we, we hear about a lot, especially in countries where um, internet access is, is harder for people. Um, in terms of the, the questions around 
sexual and reproductive rights. Does there, anyone have any other answers or anything they want to share? So maybe Mark, do you want to read them out again as a reminder? They're, they're in the chat. I am fine, thank you so much. I am fine, thank you. Okay. Uh, again, the question. Uh, what, what can we do as a labor advocate? I think that is the last one. Yep, so, so all the questions are in the chat, but just to, to say them again, in case anyone has anything to share before we, we wrap up, yeah. um, has anyone participated in any training or projects that they would like to talk about around sexual and reproductive health? Are there any barriers that people would like to talk about that haven't we haven't heard about so far? What are some of the extra barriers that women with intellectual disabilities may face? in terms of their sexual and reproductive health? What can self-advocates do, as Mark just said, to advocate for these rights? And do you have any resources that you can share? So Stephanie um, said that she had some resources and that she will email them to the group afterwards. Does anyone else have some resources that they can share? So if you've got any, any comments on any of these, it would be great to hear about them. Yeah, any comments, uh, anything to share? No? Juan, do you want to talk? I can see that. Carlos, you've unmuted. Do you want to say anything? No? Um, uh, my observation is that I think uh, this topic is really, really important. Uh, cause uh, I think all of us want to learn about this topic. I think we are more like we are lacking more information. That's why I think we are forced to express the answer. I'm I'm comparing with the other topics when it comes to like uh, group discussion. Many people come in and share experience, but it seems like many don't know much about these issues, which really I think we have to think uh, think more about it and see how we can help our members, help organizations so that we get this information as a part of this. So it's something that we need to start thinking about as in uh, Plano International and Inclusion International. How can we work with our members on this topic? We try finding uh, resources so that uh, we get more information because I think the more information we get, the more knowledge we have, the more we could have contributed about this topic. But just having one or two are contributing, that means this topic is very important and we need to learn about it. Yeah. 
right so so i think oh. that's that's important mark so we'll share the resources we have and uh, like you say if we, we if we find any more resources we'll make sure to share them within the self-advocacy group um and perhaps as we have heard we can oh. advocate for training um that uh, Luis has uh, was talking about, that Ruth was talking about, that Stephanie was talking about, and if you've got um, some more details about those trainings, uh, we can share them so that um, we can learn. I think that's a really good point, Mark. Thank you for that. Now, should we round up? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for joining. And uh, thank you very much for our speakers, Ruth and uh, Louis, for sharing experiences and those who have come on uh, discussions. Um, yeah, as we have said, I think this is an important topic and uh, we'll make sure that we share this open. And um, yeah, we'll learn more from uh, this. Uh, see you in our next uh, session, which it will be next month. And uh, it will be on Saturday. Uh, 5 p.m. sometime, Spanish time, and the meeting will be on political participation. So, I serve advocates that you have been, if you have attended political issues, you want to share experience, you can find us and uh, you share experience. But thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much. <laughs> for contributions and uh, looking forward I will soon send the the recordings for this meeting and uh, the agenda for our next meeting will be in touch. Thank you very very much. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Bye, Alice. Bye, Louis. Bye. Bye, Alice. Bye, Alice. Bye. Bye. Bye.